Hi, welcome everybody. Warburton's Baker's Born and Bread. Just one cornetto. In Britain, there are some food and drinks brands we love so much Ooh. that they feel like they're part of the family. In all truth, who eats the most of these in our house? You. Yeah. You! <laughs> I'm Helen Skelton. Oh, my word! And I'm going behind closed doors... Beans, beans, times. ...to discover the secrets... <laughs> ..of some of the world's biggest super brands. Without the yeast, there is no Guinness. So are we going to see a load more Cocoa Pops flavours then? We'd have to kill you if we told you that. <laughs> I want to find out how they make the things we love... Are you ever going to find the perfect potato? Maybe not, but doesn't mean you shouldn't try. How they build their global empires. Tell me how you get to be... How do I get to be the big cheese? Yes. What have Walker's done right? You know, they get the right people to do their adverts for them. <laughs> <laughs> and what gives them sleepless nights? We have got to try and rescue that brand from where it is now and make it into what it should be. You're at your most vulnerable when you're at your most successful. probably one of those brands that everybody trusts and nobody questions because they've been in our cupboards, they're the things that our mum bought us, they're the things that our granny might give us when we went round for tea. But how have Heinz got to that point? You know, they don't just have one or two products, they have a catalogue of products that they have managed to make large sections of our society think they can't live without. There are loads of kids who won't eat anything without tomato sauce. I really enjoy beans on toast when the bread's gone a bit soggy. You know, when when the beans have been sitting on the toast for a bit and it goes a bit soft. That's all right with me. Heinz is one of the world's most loved food brands, worth more than $1 billion. They have nearly 6,000 products on sale and can be found in nearly every country across the globe. They make ketchup, salad cream, spaghetti hoops, soups, and, of course, my personal favourite, beans. i tell you what, Heinz magic beans. Baked beans on toast for breakfast. I'm still eating baked beans fresh from my gym. And if you speak my beans, they're ready to be sampled. Nine out of ten UK households have a Heinz product in their cupboards. My absolute favourite in terms of soups. I want to find out how Heinz became the billion-dollar company it is today and how they plan to compete in a marketplace being driven by the demand for healthier options. Heinz may be a British favourite, but the brand actually started out in 1869 in Pittsburgh, USA. The founder was Henry J. Heinz. Inspired by his mother's recipes, Henry's first product was a superior grated horseradish, which he sold in glass bottles so his customers could see the quality. Now, more than 150 years later, Heinz is one of the largest food brands in the world. I'm heading to their Kit Green factory in Wigan to find out how they make their number one selling product in the UK. Baked beans. I think the thing about Heinz is it's so accessible that everybody's had it at some point. You know, as a kid growing up, we had tomato soup after my dad played football on Sunday. My brother had beans on toast before he played a football match. Me and my brother would have spaghetti on toast after swimming. They're just part of the fabric of everyday life. If you're, you know, a family and you're busy, they're easy, they're quick, they're convenient. But it's not uncommon for me to have loads of my kids' friends over and you will have fish fingers and beans or spaghetti hoops on toast because you can do it quickly and easily while you're watching them run around. Kit Green is the largest food factory in Europe and sprawls over 200,000 square metres. That's bigger than 27 football pitches. Hello, you must be John. I am. So this is the home of baked beans? This is the home of baked beans at Heinz in Wigan. I was expecting there to be tins of beans everywhere. That was no, just the dream, though. Not yet. Look a bit later. This way? Yes, this way. Thank you. How many, how many people work here? 
about 850 people now. Right. Um, there, uh, when I started, there was um, there was 3,500 people. Oh my God! What? Yeah, so a lot more so manual. So what's changed? Uh, just manual operations. No, you know, technology moves on, so robots, etc. We eat more baked beans in the UK than any other country in the world. Every week, this high-tech factory makes around 20 million cans of beans to meet our demand. So what is going on here? OK, so we're just changing over a two-ton bag of haricot beans. So the actual haricot beans come into here? Yes. From where? They have come from North America. And how many tonnes of beans are coming in here on a daily basis? We will consume around 140 tonnes a day. A day? Yeah, so in a, in a typical uh, 24 hours, we'll make between three and three and a half million cans of beans. Three and a half million cans of beans in 24 hours? Yes. I can't believe people eat that many tins of beans. Yeah, we do get through some beans in the UK. Can I grab some? You can, off the side, yes. Off the edge, yep. it's all safe. So these are the haricot beans that will become baked beans? Yes. Wow, yeah, I mean, they're really rock hard, aren't they? Yeah. Do you actually bake them? They're actually baked and cooked inside the camp. What? We cook the beans inside the camp. Oh, my day. And does that happen here? It does, yes. Heinz is the biggest buyer of haricot beans in the world. To get to the soft-baked bean we know and love, every day, more than a billion of them are washed, then blanched, a process of scalding the beans in steam for a short time, then quickly cooling them. This prevents loss of flavour, colour and slows vitamin loss. Then, every single bean is checked by a laser for size and colour. The rejects are removed. The rest are put into cans which are made on site. All that's left to go in now is the very special mix of herbs and spices that make up the sauce. So in there, this is the blend. Yep. So this is the secret blend of spices. Yes. That makes Heinz beans, Heinz beans. Correct. So how many people know the exact recipe for Heinz baked beans? Four. No way. It must be written down. Nope. Do you know who the four people are? No. And do those people work in the business? Um, yes. <laughs> Point and flick at me. I don't know. Would you tell me if it was you? Uh, if I did know, no. <laughs> but I don't know, no. so <laughs> you're not going to get it out of me. But what happened? If you're one of the four people who know the recipe, at some point you're going to retire. Yep. So how do you get picked to be one of the four people who knows the recipe? Probably by somebody very, very important and not me. I feel like I can see salt. It looks like turmeric, but it's not. It looks like paprika, but it's not. Mm. You're a trusting bunch in Wigan. The spices are added to tomato pulp to make the secret sauce. The sauce is then heated before being added to the beans already in the can. Every can holds around 465 beans. The cans are then sealed and cooked at 126 degrees C. You're probably about 90 to 100 minutes from a dry bean all the way through to finished goods. That's a quick process when you're cooking beans, isn't it? 90 to 100 minutes. And if you actually touch the palate, you'll feel it's nice and They're warm. They're still warm! Like fresh bread. <laughs> From when they were cooked? Exactly. Thank you so much, John. Oh, you're welcome. I think it's fascinating that only four people know the exact blend of Heinz beans. And I know it would be silly, perhaps, to get too carried away with it, but that's the thing that I'll tell people when I go home. I say to my husband, guess what? You know the actual recipe? Only four people know, and no-one knows who the four people are, and the four people don't know each other, and they can't get on a plane together, just in case. Well, what did you want to grow up to be, then? Oh, a famous actress. And, um, what do you want to be, then? Millions of little Britons have grown up great, knowing beans means Heinz. Every year in the UK, we eat over 500 million tins of Heinz baked beans. And yet, we might not have had them had Henry J. Heinz not been determined to expand his business to British shores. In 1886, he boarded a boat in New Jersey with a suitcase of his wares. 
On arrival in Liverpool, he headed straight to Fortnum & Mason in London, then considered the finest purveyors of food and drink in the city. And after just one tasting session, Fortnum & Mason bought all Henry's stock. And so began the story of Heinz in the UK. I'm meeting Fortnum's historian, Dr Andrea Tanner, to find out more about Henry J. Heinz and his incredible journey. Hello. Hello, it's very nice to meet you. Thank you for having me in this gorgeous setting. It's so calming in here, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's a very restful, I hope, welcoming space. And with the most respect to Fortnum and Mason and Heinz, I don't think you think Fortnum and Mason, Heinz. No, I suppose you think Fortnum and Mason caviar. Yes. <laughs> Lobster. <laughs> but no, um, Henry J. Hines, when he came to London to peddle his wares in his carpet bag, was looking for what he wanted were the finest establishments. And he turned up at Fortnum's in a handsome cab with no appointment and was greeted by the buyer. And what did he bring? He brought bottles and tins of things, horseradish, um, tomato ketchup, soups, um, tinned vegetables. And he was so pleased because he said that Fortnum's catered for the finest trade of London, but also that we had an international clientele and we could spread the word for his tinned and bottled products. So all the clients here were well off? Yes, yes they were. They were the, the fine society of London. And that was really because you came to Fortnum's to find things you couldn't find anywhere else. Where did Heinz fit in? Heinz was exotic. We, we had a reputation for preserved food. You know, we had an expeditions department. So if you were going off, I don't know, in search of the Komodo dragon to Sumatra, we could supply you with everything you wanted. If you were going on safari, if you were going up Everest, we could supply you with everything you wanted. And it came in tins and bottles. When did baked beans appear ba on the shelves? Baked beans came, into, came onto our shelves in the Edwardian era, so about 1905, 1906. And at that time, were they like the beans that we know today? Were they in tomato mm, sauce? They were in tomato sauce, but they had a lot more sugar in them, like molasses, and they weren't vegetarian because the original Boston baked bean recipe has pork fat in it. Okay. So quite a different texture and a different taste to what we have today. So Fortnum & Mason can claim the fact that we beans on toast is a thing in Britain. Indeed. Because of Indeed. that welcome be because, they gave him. Because he got a welcome. Yeah. I'd be claiming that if that was me. <laughs> I'd have that outside. You, you guys get beans on toast because of us. Because of us. It's hard to believe that Heinz, one of the most popular and affordable food brands in the UK, started out here, in upmarket Fortnum & Mason. What was once considered exotic is now food for the masses. In 1869, Henry J. Hines produced his first ever product, horseradish sauce. Today, Heinz is responsible for many of the biggest selling sauces in the world. They make salad cream, barbecue sauce, saucy sauce, burger sauce, and the most famous sauce of them all. No other ketchup is richer or thicker than Heinz tomato ketchup, which probably explains why no other ketchup tastes quite like Heinz. My favourite Heinz product is tomato ketchup. I have had a bit of an obsession with the Heinz ketchup bottle. I'm quite snobby of my ketchup, I'm not going to lie. It has, if it's not Heinz, I can just tell. But I have ketchup on everything. You, you need to understand, when I mean everything, I mean anything and everything. Obviously, my chips, my fast food. Sausage rolls, crisps, lasagna. I used to have it with fish pie. OK, in all honesty, not everything. I haven't had it with ice cream or, or chocolate. <laughs> Without doubt, this is the most eaten Heinz thing, well, that could have gone wrong, in our house, tomato ketchup. Heinz tomato ketchup is the best-selling ketchup in the world. 
selling 650 million bottles every single year. It was created in 1876 at the company headquarters in Pittsburgh, USA. But it wasn't called ketchup back then. It was called catsup, named after an ancient Chinese recipe for sauce. Fast forward over 140 years, and today 85% of the Heinz ketchup we eat in the UK is made in the Netherlands. Every day, this factory in Elst produces 1.8 million bottles. That's 175,000 tonnes of ketchup a year. Tomato paste arrives in one and a half tonne sachets and is mixed with water, sugar, vinegar, brine and secret spices. Then it must pass through this contraption, known as the quantifier. Ketchup is poured in and released and its speed measured over 10 seconds. The ketchup must not travel faster than 0.028 miles per hour. If it does, it's the wrong viscosity and will be rejected. If it's slow enough, it will be bottled, capped and labelled before heading off to the shops. Despite having the world's favourite ketchup, super brands like Heinz can never stand still. With consumer tastes and desires constantly changing, if the brand wants to remain popular, they must change with them. I'm at the Shard, Heinz HQ in London, to meet their head of marketing, Sam, to find out how the brand is adapting their sources to meet the latest trends. <laughs> Good start. Oh. <laughs> well, that's a good start. Security's good here. Thanks. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> Hello. You must be Sam. Yeah, welcome. Thank Hi. you for having me. Yeah, nice to see you. Right, but let's have a look at this place then. Oh my, look at this. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I totally didn't realise the history of Heinz until yeah. I started looking into this. Because if you think about Heinz today, compared to where it was, that's as different as night and day, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know if you ever know the origin story of Heinz 57, where that came from. No. No. Um, so, technically, Heinz 57 is 57 varieties. But in actual fact, that was Henry J. Heinz's first sort of attempt at marketing. He apparently was um, on the New York subway and saw something about a shoemaker who had 21 varieties. And his favourite number was 50, and his wife's favourite number was 7, and he just thought 57 sounded really cool. And in actual fact, there were six varieties even then and we've got way more today um, because people do debate the 57 they do don't they? yeah what does the 57 mean but it's just a made-up it was literally just because it sounded good <laughs> and I didn't realize the links to going on expeditions yeah. and that kind of really embeds you yeah with absolutely that kind of British explorer spirit I mean what a history the job for all of us now is keeping it fresh and relevant and so that next generations to come love it as well let's talk about that yes absolutely what is the future of Heinz? So you've been around for 150 mm. years. Is it my dad who's always had beans on toast? Or is it millennials? To be quite honest, it's both. We've got to service the kind of loyal consumers that we have. And then we've also got to make sure that we stay relevant for the consumers of the future, whether that's the, tea, the tin of beans on toast or it's one of the new products that we do or it's the sources that we bring in. But yeah, we, we think there's definitely room to bring in just a few more new things that will keep people interested and come back into the brand. Straight away, I'm looking at yeah. these sauces that I know and recognise and have in my cupboard, but they're all in massive letters saying vegan. Absolutely. So this was our biggest kind of innovation push last year is we brought out our classics into vegan ranges. Not to replace them, because people still like to have options. That is hard, though, isn't it? Because it's like keeping Granny happy and the 17-year-old happy, is, but it? we're really lucky that our core is already... 80-something percent vegan. We think about it's beans or even ketchup made from tomatoes. Um, and so what we've been doing to sort of try and keep up with the times is actually innovating quite a lot more than we've done um, in the past. But it's pretty exciting to think of something like salad cream, which was actually, by the way, the first product that Henry J. Hines ever developed just for the UK market. Apparently it took eight years to get the recipe right. But to be able to offer that as like on, something as iconic as that in a vegan range so that more people can enjoy it is something that we've been very proud of. But you'll keep the 
vegan salad cream and the original salad cream, you wouldn't replace one with the other. I mean, who knows in the future, but at the moment there's no intention. I mean, if one day we suddenly find that we're all eating all vegan all the time, then of course you follow the trends and you do that. But no, I mean, for us, we have such a loyal consumer base in our core offers that we think there's room for both. So is this a way of getting the younger consumer yeah, by putting vegan on it? Absolutely, yeah. They often tend to be more on the flexitarian basis. So they're just looking for easy ways to incorporate more plant-based foods into their diets. The dream is that we move with the times and that, you know, the 13, 12-year-olds of today in like five years' time are dyed in the Royal Heinz loyalists in the way that, you know, like we've grown up, right? Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's the thing though, isn't it? Because you are the everyman product. Yeah. Which it wasn't. I find, when you say to people it started in Fortnum and Mason, I just don't it think it doesn't you sound can get like that. it. No, we, we've got to stay relatable. That's that's kind of the power of the brand, really. Further, when he contacted Heinz with an idea for a TV commercial, I one day just had this advert idea, and I was like, oh, that would be quite a funny advert idea, but maybe it won't be me who who does it. And I sort of pitched it, and then here we are. I was at this super posh restaurant. Super posh. The type of place that has chandeliers and paintings on the wall and way too many forks. I think classical music was playing, but maybe it was jazz. No, definitely classical. The waiter comes over, he's telling me about the specials. Super fancy, fancy vegetables, fancy sauces. I said, sounds fancy. So fast forward and the food comes. The waiter goes on to tell me, we are proud to present this farm to table, blah, 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 posh and fancy, blah, 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 with a side. Blah, blah, blah. The ad was part of a huge marketing campaign centred around Ed's ketchup obsession. As a kid, I just had it with everything. You know, I'd have it with peas, I'd have it with pasta, I'd have it with chips, I'd have it with pizza. Like, it was just always on the side. You know, the food looked good. I just thought there was something missing. So I reach into my bag and I take out the only thing that can complete me. And at that point, the whole world came to a stop. in the way to what's screaming through his eyes. So that's my idea. Do you want to do it? My brother is a ketchup lover. My mum and dad, not so much. Got to the point where they don't have ketchup in their house and I'll go back for Christmas and stuff and there's no ketchup, but Heinz gave me a lifetime supply for my uh, advert, so I, I've always got a bottle of ketchup with me. Along with the lifetime supply of sauce, Heinz released a limited edition Edchup ketchup in honour of their most famous ambassador. Gary Lineker is the face of Walker's Crisps and um, I want to be the Gary Lineker of ketchup. <laughs> 120 years ago, Heinz baked beans arrived in the UK and were exclusively sold in Fortnum and Mason. So how did they go from being the food of the privileged few to the food of the masses? Well, apart from the taste, it was the convenience. to cook a meal in minutes was not lost on the Edwardian housewife. And these long-lasting products quickly caught on. Beans soon became so popular, they were being sold in every shop and supermarket in the UK. Up to this point, tin food contained many additives and they weren't all good for you. But Henry J. Hines insisted his food was pure and this is what set him apart from the competition. His dedication to quality gained the trust of the consumer, cornering the market in tinned food. This changed our shopping habits overnight. By the time of the Second World War, their baked beans were considered so important, they were made exempt from rationing. You guarded your ration books. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I'm so glad. This cemented Heinz's place in the hearts of the wartime generation. Today, the over 55s are the biggest buyers of tin food. Was anybody around in rationing? Talk about rationing. We were survived, we're still here, aren't we? You know, yeah. But... yeah, well, I'm the youngest of eight children, so oh, my, mother was, yeah, my mother was bringing up eight of us yeah. during the war. 
And you just live according to what you get. Yeah. We were brought up with Heinz um, baked beans. I always remember, as a ch you know, coming back from school and having beans on toast. To have baked beans on toast, that would be a meal. Did you know that only four people know the exact recipe for baked beans? No. Who are the four, then? They won't tell anyone. Well, that's not right. We should know, should we? <laughs> <laughs> so we can make it ourselves. <laughs> no. yeah. Do you still eat them? Yeah, no, I had them this morning for my breakfast. More. The beans and pork sausages, I buy them cos when my grandchildren come, and great-grandchildren, yeah. they like them. Yeah. And I don't like brown toast. I like white toast. With your beans. With your beans. With your beans. Mm. With my beans, yeah. You can't beat a tin of beans, can you, really? If you're running short in the cupboard and yeah. they turn up, get the beans out and yeah. they'll always have yeah. beans on toast. Heinz baked beans have been a staple of the British diet for over 100 years. In the 60s, they came up with one of the most iconic advertising slogans of all time. A million housewives every day pick up a tin of beans and say, beans means Heinz. This slogan still runs today and has inspired a series of memorable adverts. I wonder, if I had enough Heinz baked beans, do you think I could become Prime Minister? You just might, Margaret. It just might. One of the reasons for beans becoming so popular is that they have always been considered nutritious. But in today's increasingly health-conscious world, I wonder if tin food really is as good for you as fresh. I'm meeting Priya, a leading nutritionist, to find out. Priya, a tin of beans, then, how nutritious is a normal tin of beans? A normal tin of beans can be highly nutritious. It's actually counted as one of your five a day. And although they contain some salt and sugar, you can choose the no added salt and sugar versions, which makes it a really great meal. But you don't want to be having them every single day. So if it's something that you're adding into your repertoire of meals, something that you're having a couple of times a week, then yes. In the same way that processed foods have a stigma attached, I would argue that tin foods have a stigma attached. Is that fair, though? I don't think it is. I think there's definitely a generational thing going on there. So talking to people from younger generations, my cousin, for example, was saying that he doesn't really eat tin foods. He doesn't think they're good for you. Why do you think that is, then? Why are younger people turning away from tin foods? I think partially it's the rise of the influencer and social media. And when you look on things like Instagram, people are cooking from scratch. They're using fresh ingredients. You don't see many people using tinned food. It's interesting, though, isn't it? If a whole generation of people are turning away from tinned foods, do you think the future of tinned foods is doomed? Interesting question. I don't think it's doomed, but I think it's something we do need to be encouraging people to eat, especially people who are on lower budgets because tinned food is a really accessible way for you to get different fruits, vegetables, beans and pulses into your diet in a convenient way. Are you a beans eater? Do you eat Heinz beans? Yes, I do eat beans, but not always Heinz. What? You eat the... Is there another brand of bean? There are, I'm afraid there are, so I quite often just go for the supermarket own brand. And your kids are happy with that? They are. Oh, my words, I, know, I didn't think it was possible, but if you're the expert, I'm going to try it. Sorry, Heinz. So despite the fact tin food still has a place in a healthy diet, the younger generation are moving away from tins. That surely means they must be eating less baked beans. I'm meeting Jojo, the Heinz president of Northern Europe. Hello! Hello, Helen. You must be Jojo. Yes, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I want to find out what they're doing to keep baked beans the number one Heinz product in the UK. The bean, as you know it, has always lived in a can. But we do believe that more people should be enjoying the bean in different forms. Right. And so we decided to liberate the bean from the can and let it fly into different types of food. <laughs> Even the way you're saying that means you know that's a funny notion. Yeah, maybe because I say it so often, I actually don't think it's so funny. But do, do you think people are going to find it funny? Well, I mean, <laughs> we're liberating the bean. I know. So why change it? Because we want people to enjoy it in different occasions. So if you think about how people have been enjoying their beans, you know, if you're having, for example, a, a burger, you might not necessarily think of a bean as being able to be in your burger. But, you know, 
outside the toast and inside the bun. It's um, for us to make sure that the new generation can enjoy beans as much as the older generation has enjoyed beans. That's and how the are you challenge. Gonna do that? By liberating the beans from the can. <laughs> Take me to your militia beans. <laughs> so talk me through what we've got. So here we've got a selection of our beans hummus, different okay. types of beans hummus. So beans hummus with tomato, black beans, oh. um, beans with uh, butternut squash. Butternut squash on how? That does taste earthy. <laughs> Not in a bad way. Try this one. Mm. Um, that's delicious. Beautiful. I can taste beans in that. I can taste Heinz beans. That's it. That's it. We got you. Oh, actually, you need to try this one. Oh, my days. I'm going to be rolling out of here. <laughs> I can't even get my mouth around that. Oh. That's like a McDonald's. <laughs> and I love McDonald's. Is that a bad thing? Oh, Helen, you are just hilarious, yeah. But you can actually see the bean in there, can't you? Yes, that's the beauty of it. You can see the bean and taste the bean. Who do you see buying this or eating this? So the younger generation, let's say the, you know, 20-year-olds. OK. Is this because, at the minute, a lot of people are into vegan and plant-based diets? Do you think this is a trend that'll stick around? A hundred percent. We cannot, I mean, there's been an incredible growth in, in flexitarians, so individuals that eat both, you know, an animal protein diet as well as a plant protein diet. Also, people are a lot more concerned with the environment. So sustainability is obviously a big reason why a lot of people choose to eat a plant-based plant diet. And the world cannot sustain us continuing to eat the same levels of, of animal protein we've always, we've always eaten. So this is absolutely here to stay, as long as it's great tasting food. Maybe not all of these things will work, but at least we're trying to keep ourselves relevant without the fear of failing. Can I steal this? Is that all? Yeah, you can. Take okay. it to your husband. Yeah, I might take these two. Thanks. <laughs> Brilliant. Although the bean burger is in the shops, the other products are still going through taste trials before they're released. Heinz hopes they will appeal to new customers, but there's a large part of the population that love baked beans just the way they are. One man in South Wales has dedicated the last 35 years to his love of Heinz beans. Cutley Beanie is a half-baked superhero from Planet Venus, and of course, he's adopted his hometown of Port Talbot as his homestead and domain. Captain Beanie loves beans so much, he's set up a museum in his home that's open to the public, and I'm off to visit. Because it's the food of the gods. It's a food of superheroes. It must be this. Uh, what's the password? Uh, beanie Beanie. Sounds Be good to me. Uh, good day. Oh, my day. <laughs> Are you full of beans today, Helen? I, I, I suspect I will be in a bit. Well, follow the beans, yeah. by all beans. Uh, nice. Make your way into the Haruko Hall of Fame. Wowza! <laughs> the Haruko Hall of Fame. Oh, my days. Yeah. And this is my Heinz kitchen. Come on right. in. I mean, oh, my word. You've put Heinz on the tiles. Yes. You've got 3D beans. <laughs> You've got the colour scheme is beans. Every bit of this kitchen is yeah. dedicated to Heinz. No, wow. Hel no Helen, I've got yes. to explain something to you. Oh. You can say to me, do Heinz know of my image? OK? Do yeah. they? Yes, because over here, I'm a number one ambinador. Right, ambi... OK. And there they are. They gave me a, a card to say I'm the number one fan, Captain Beanie. And it's oh, written wow. by the, all the customer care family. team in Heinz. They even recognise you as their number one fan. What does that mean to you? Do you know what? I'm there on the highest echelons of Big Bean Dong. And I feel as if I'm the uh, I'm being a door for Heinz. Does Captain Beanie ever switch off? No. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, crikey. So, we come to the greatest... Da, 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 da. There we are. By all beans, make your way into the Big Bean Museum of Excellence. Oh, my Lord! If you look at it, it, it is mind-boggling because there's so many artefacts 
here dedicated to baked beans. Now, when I uh, assembled the Baked Bean Museum, I didn't realise how much merchandise out there was in your face. Well, why would you? Typically yep. in a week, how many visitors do you think you get? Well, it's seasonal, you see. Right. Over the course of the year, then, on average, because you've been open since 2009, right? 2009, yes. I've entertained uh, well over 800 people. And sometimes they get, believe it or not, hen parties coming here. And birthday surprises. And uh, sometimes I get my friend over there, Harry, Harry Co. He, he, he's sort of a bit of a guffer. Right. And uh, I blame it on him to create this noise, you see. Part detected. Part detected. I think, children, it's about time we should leave the Big B Museum. Helen, hurry up. So you have dedicated your life to be an ambassador for mm. beans. Yeah. yeah. But you have gone a step further, haven't you? Yes, well, initially my real name is Barry Kirk, you see, and everybody used to call me Captain Kirk out of Star Trek. And someone just mentioned, as a whim, uh, you should change your name by Deed Paul. And I thought, well, that sounds fun. So I went to a solicitor, and believe it or not, Helen, 30 years to uh, the month, I changed it by Deed Paul. So you... So... <laughs> And everything says Captain Beanie. Indeed, yeah. And my mother, God bless her, she said, uh, are you my son or this make-believe Captain Beanie? Mum, I said, in my heart, I'm your son. I'm Barry Kirk. But on the outside, <laughs> that's Captain Beanie. Um, listen, you're an absolute joy. Good luck with spreading that bean... What? You, you can't help but talk to you in puns. <laughs> It's been amazing. Right, ta-ta. Thank you, Helen, and uh, may the force go behind you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>so you're future proofing, aren't you? We're trying to. We recognise that there's a there's a goal. We've been here for 100 over 100 years, and then we want to be here for more than 100 years more. So who is your target audience when it comes to these new products? So across Beans Burger specifically, we're looking at a younger family audience, right? With people who are looking to engage in plant-based eating more often. What we're seeing now is like, you know, eight in 10 people in the UK now are engaging in plant-based eating as a main meal within the week. So they want plant-based and they want sustainability, but do they want their food delivered to them? Yeah, I mean, convenience is one of the fastest growing trends that we see. What's more convenient than sitting at home, spending two minutes on your app ordering, and then it turns up to you 15 minutes later? Well, I use those apps. I wondered how they work, but is this, is this our app guy? <laughs> no, this is not our oh, app. Oh, is it just a guy on a computer? This is just a guy on a computer. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered if you were, like, dishing out the beans, burgers. <laughs> Listen, they don't need to know. He's responsible for all the burgers going out across <laughs> London. Who's responsible for cooking Shall them? Shall I show you yes, who's responsible? Yes, yes. That would have been good, though, wouldn't that it? That would have been good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in here. Hello. Hiya. So this is Lawrence. Lawrence is our head of culinary in the UK. Right, I'm going to shuffle down this way. Where's... am I... Just there would be great. Least yeah, in the way. in the middle of everything. It smells good in here, Lawrence. So am I right in thinking you helped create this burger? I did, yeah. I did, yeah. So how many versions of this burger did you have to do before you came up with a recipe that 
you were happy to put your name to? We actually went through around 50 to 60 versions of this product before we were happy enough to launch it. We didn't want it to be the generic beans burger, you know, coated in breadcrumb and deep fat fried. And then we also didn't want it to be a meat replacement or something like that. We wanted it to have its unique flavour, its unique texture. Because that's the thing, isn't it? People always go, meat eaters go, oh, it doesn't taste like a burger. Yeah. But are you saying this isn't meant to be a burger? No, it's not supposed to taste like a burger. Um, it's supposed to taste like Heinz big beans. It's supposed to taste like mushed up Heinz beans in a patty. Mm -hmm. A bit more technical than I must start my beef. I didn't mean that rude. I appreciate you put a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah. So what's binding those beans? I can see sweet corn. Yeah, there's sweet corn in this one. Um, there are black beans. There are onions. Um, I put you on the spot now, haven't I? You have. You have. <laughs> see, I can say this to you in a way that I can't say to other people at Heinz HQ because I know you've got little kids. Yeah. Presumably your kids eat spaghetti hoops, beans. Oh. Or... Right. But I mean, if I let them, they, they would eat it every meal. So, right, mum to dad, do we need to be mucking about with all this hummus and burgers? Because you've got beans, like, you've got really successful products already. Yeah, the, the, thing about, the thing about baked beans is that they are inherently seen in the UK as this side plate application in the sense of with your fried breakfast, late night stack on toast. Or, with your chicken nuggets. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And actually, from a from a calorie point of view and from a protein point of view, beans are so much more in the sense of they're so high in protein compared to that like chicken, it's like off the scale. Um, and actually, it's, you can use it as an ingredient. It's not just being it in a microwave or put it on a pot and heat them up and put it on toast. There's so much more you can do with beans, you know, at home. Yeah. Thank you. How many fries? The burger looks great. Look at that! Thank you, Chef. I shall enjoy. Enjoy. Brilliant. Cheers, mate. See ya. I know I like the beans burger, but I'm not the target audience. I've set up a tasting session with seven Gen Zers, and I'm going to put the beans burger to the test. The moment of truth. You know, it's all very well creating a product, tapping into a, a trend. But actually, if no one's going to buy it and no one's going to eat it, what's the point? The target market for this is Generation Z, young people who are clued up about food. We've got a group of them. I'm going to see if they like this burger. The proof of the pudding is literally in the eating of the burger. Da -da -da. OK, they're vegan. Yep. Guys, I'm gonna let you take a burger and Thank then I'm passing them down. Thank you. Yeah, go in. Get stuck in. Look at that. There you go. There you go. Three, two, one, bite. Mm. I don't know what I think. I don't think I'd like it. You don't? No. I love this actually is so good. OK, let's start with you then, James. Thumbs up, thumbs down? Definitely a down for me. Right. I don't really try many vegan foods because this is sort of why, because it's just not for me. Um, Talk just, me through it. What's wrong with it? It's got loads of, like, weird bits in it and I don't really know what they are because, obviously, I'm used to, like, normal meat burgers and it's just not for me. <laughs> the, the thing that I've been told to tell you is that this is not a meat substitute. This is leave your meat burgers to one side and this is something totally different. Can I eat yours for you? Yeah. Obviously, I've had a lot of uh, bean burgers. I'd say it compares pretty well. It doesn't really scream Heinz to me. You know, I mean, I didn't really see a lot of beans in there. It's more like sweet corn and stuff like that. So I wouldn't really associate that with Heinz. Saf is in. She took my mm. burger. Saf said James's burger. Yeah. OK. I mean, you like to eat beans cold out of a can, though, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, quite, I quite like it. This, to me, feels like Indian food because it has this kind of spice in it, which is, which is the dominant taste from this, this burger. And I quite like the spice. Spice is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good kick. Yeah. But you know if you order something on a delivery or a Uber or Just Eat or whatever, you're doing it because you've got a need for... You want it now and, like, you want that burger or chips or takeaway or whatever. 
Is this the kind of thing that you'd go on those apps for? Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's like a vegan option and I want something off just you, yeah, I'm clicking the order button, isn't it? Mm. Like when I think takeaway, I just think of like things like burgers, but not like bean burgers. Mm. I think it's a step in the right direction that uh, Heinz is offering more like vegan options, and I think it will also appeal to long-time consumers, people who've been eating Heinz for all their life, like old people as well. Like, oh, Heinz. Baked bean burger, let me try that sort of thing, yeah. Overall, it's, it's good. I thought it was a good burger. The trend for vegan and convenience food is here to stay. And Heinz hopes that by entering this marketplace, their products will be here to stay too. Beans burgers on a delivery bike is a long way from where they started. Heinz have taken their product from a place of luxury, you know, an exotic item at the table of rich people, to an almost unrecognisable point. What I think you have to give Heinz credit for is that they aren't resting on their laurels. But I think what Heinz are thinking is what if that little decrease continues year on year on year? And if and when it does, they've got something else ready to go. And that to me is what liberating the bean is all about. Are they there yet with those winning products and people saying, I can't wait to eat a Heinz bean burger? I don't know if they are but you've got to start somewhere, right?